Maybe so, but by this time, the New York state farmers weren't in a believing mood. They took their lawyer down to southern Ohio to talk with farmers who had lived under such lines for 10 years. We tagged along. Some of the Ohio farmers had little to complain about, said they'd learned to live with it. Others hadn't. At the time we first found the barn roof was charged, I had a, a man who was painting along the edge, and when he touched the barn roof and he's standing on an aluminum ladder, he, uh, he was shocked. It was enough to practically knock him off the ladder. The power company in Ohio fixed that by grounding the barn roof and the house roof and the children's metal swing. The threat of dangerous shock can apparently be handled. But if you live and work under the line, you never forget it's there. Can you notice the feel of the energy when you're standing under the line or touching something standing under the line? You raise hair on your arm. And the noise from the line? Again, just a nuisance. Barry says only once has he heard noise from such a line. I was out on a country road. And if you waited for the car traffic to die away for a quarter of a mile on both sides of where you were stopped, you could hear that faint crackle. So first of all, it's a phenomenon that's very transitory. The day we filmed in southern Ohio, it was hot and very dry. You can hear it a half a mile in real rainy weather, snowy weather. That noise. And what sort of a noise is it? It's a popping and a snapping and a roar on there. But probably most disturbing to people who have to live around the lines are reports that the electric and magnetic fields they set up might cause health problems. Dr. Andrew Marino is a biophysicist at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Syracuse. His testimony about the possible health hazards involved in living around huge power lines has snarled the attempts of the New York State Power Authority to operate that upstate line at 765 kilovolts. The physical evidence that we have today uh, are the laboratory experiments, now upwards of 60 or so, uh, in which uh, investigators have exposed the various animal systems, primates, monkeys, uh, rats, mice, all the way down to amoeba, to electric field strengths and magnetic field strengths, which are uh, such that they can arise from the transmission line, and just a whole variety of effects have been observed. Stunted growth, uh, uh, body chemistry alterations, blood chemistry alterations, cardiovascular system alterations, just the, the whole gamut of possible biological effects. The Power Authority paid consultants fees to several scientists who dispute Dr. Marino's findings. They say the huge line would be safe, that Marino's science is bad. Three of those scientists are from the University of Rochester. Two of them just refused to be interviewed. One said he didn't have the time, the other said that he didn't think that the subject could be adequately discussed on television. The third scientist, electrical engineering professor Edwin Carstensen, agreed to answer our questions. The potential hazard from these transmission lines is negligible by comparison to any uh, normal kind of hazard that we expose ourselves to day in and day out, and particularly when I put this in perspective to the need for these lines. We exposed rats for 30 days to an electric field and found that the electric field created a response within the bodies of the animals similar to that undergone by an animal or a human being suffering from stress. It created changes in the, in the uh, blood chemistry of the animal indicative of stress. In another experiment involving mice, we found that the electric field caused stunted growth in three successive generations of mice. In almost all of these ex uh, experiments where effects have been claimed, they have not been uh, 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 confirmed by independent investigators. This put together with the fact that there are literally hundreds of papers which do not show effects leads me to believe that there is no significant hazard associated with these electric fields. To be sure, Dr. Marino is lonely within the scientific community when he talks about harmful biological effects from power lines. But his mentor believes him. Dr. Robert Becker has been chief orthopedic surgeon at the Syracuse Veterans Hospital for 20 years. He has done extensive experimentation on what low-level currents from an electromagnetic field can do to us. Dr. Becker has found that very weak electrical currents can make broken bones, bones that won't heal naturally, grow together again. Along with Marino, he's concerned that if carefully controlled exposure to weak electrical fields can make bones grow, what could uncontrolled exposure, for instance, from power lines do to people? 
Andy Marino, you're satisfied that he has the credentials to make the charges that he does? Yes, I am. He has studied it? He has studied it. He has worked with me for a number of years. He's well-trained biophysicist and an extremely competent investigator. And you back up every statement that he has made to us? Exactly. They were performed, his experiments were performed in my laboratory. And Marino has had the Public Service Commission's ear. They've still not decided if that line should operate at 765 kilovolts. Commissioner Berlin. Before we took our first action in this case, told PASNI, the power authority of the state of New York, the constructor of the line, that they might find themselves ending up with a condition that the line be operated at no more than 345 kilovolts, which is a standard high voltage transmission line. They understand that. And the people of New York should understand that we are prepared to impose that limitation if there's any reason whatsoever to do so. To that, the power authority says, nonsense. They knew when they gave us permission to build that we'd run at 765 kV. And the power people insist that to operate at 345 kilovolts, which their opponents think would be safer, would be a financial disaster. The Public Service Commission expects to make a decision around the first of the year. Meanwhile, the power authority continues to build. And those upstate farmers, they concede they've lost a round. You have 38 grandchildren. Right. And you won't let them come to this house? In good conscience, if this line, in, if this line goes through in good conscience, I would not uh, be able to let them come because uh, I feel that the, the line is unsafe. These people up here vow there never will be 765,000 volts of power coming through their pastures. Stella Vars, for instance, has already been put in jail twice for trying to keep the power authority off her land. Now, I don't suppose that I can do very much. I'm no woman, blind, and I can't even read now, <laughs> but I will do what I can.